My name is Dr. Warren McAdams. I'm a physical therapist, and I also happen to be one of the world's youngest doctors of physical therapy who is board certified as a clinical specialist in pediatrics. Today, I want to discuss the AIMS, or the Alberta Infant Motor Scale. This is one I use a lot in my practice for children between age adjustments of zero months and 18 months. If a child is lesser than zero months due to prematurity or micro prematurity, I'd probably use the TEMP or the test of infant motor performance. And if the child is older than 18 months, this probably won't capture their full level of ability. And so I'm going to maybe use the PDMS too. Uh, you can check my link in the video below or check the video via the link below. Um, the exceptions to this, I wouldn't use it for a child who is ambulatory. So maybe they're walking at about 12 months of age and this test is perhaps a little infantile for them. So again, not a great representation of their full level of ability. I don't think I would use it for spina bifida. Actually, I don't really use it for any myeloma meningocele uh, just because there's other assessment measures that more appropriately depict that child's level of performance per their condition. And cerebral palsy is one that I normally just nix altogether. I don't use uh, children who have CP uh, with this just because their asymmetries impact their uh, their overall results, uh, being unable to mount certain positions and so forth. Um, there are very, very few exceptions I've made for CP in the past, and it's primarily been CP that's so minor it's barely even noticeable where this child is. And most of the time, they don't even have that diagnosis um, because it's not until later that we see the deficits. Anyways, um, so... What What is this? This is a norm reference tool. So this compares the child as they are in age adjustment in relationship to their peers within that same adjusted age. So if you're looking for something to compare a snapshot of where that child is now to where they are six months from now, or perhaps where they were two months ago, that's more of a criterion reference tool that you're looking for. Don't use this one. Um, Again, this compares children to uh, peers their own age. Adjusted, that is. Age adjusted. <laughs> um, in relationship to um, what style we take our measurements, this is an observational tool. So you can put them into position of prone, supine, sitting, and standing. Those are the uh, testing positions here but you cannot put them in specific positions within, let's say, prone. Um, I've seen some clinicians put the child in this position and just see if they can maintain it. If they can, they get a point. That is not how this works. Um, you allocate about five minutes for each of the testing positions. So in total, it should take you about 20 minutes. But when you're looking at this front page, what you'll notice is a pretty standard, uh, what's today's date, when was this child born, and then do the math there to find their chronological age, how long since they've been born, and then their corrected age, which is adding or subtracting weeks, days, months, um, in relationship to prematurity or post-maturity. This corrected age is really important because that's what we'll be using on the back here for the x-axis. and finding their percentile rank in the end. Looking at the rest of this, this chart here, we have previous items credited, and we have items credited in window. There's also subscale score. Essentially, we'll get two numbers in these boxes. We'll add them up to get the subscale score. We'll add all of the subscale scores to get the total score. The total score is what we use for the y-axis here, and with their adjusted age, we'll find where they are percentile-wise. So what do these mean? Uh, there's a lot of confusion, at least with clinicians that approach me with this assessment tool, wondering how they do this. 
The previous items corrected are basically items that the child doesn't really demonstrate because they've aged out of them. They're on the bit more motor tasks, or more advanced motor tasks now, and the previous ones just, they've, they're not really seen. <laughs> um, and then this here, items credited in window. This is the sprinkling of items that you do see this child able to perform. So that doesn't mean a lot until we actually have a visual representation. I'm just going to use items on the singular page for ease. But let's say we're testing this child in prone. We're just watching them. Five minutes pass, and I've concluded that I have not seen any of these. These three, but I have seen this one, and I did see this one. I didn't, unfortunately, didn't see that one. So I can see, or I can say that this here, this is my motor window, uh, the start and the finish. I will allocate one point for each item I did observe. So one point, two points. This one is not observed, so it's zero points. This is the items within the motor window, aka items credited in window. So I'll put a two there. And so we're ignoring these now, and we're counting the number of items here. These were the ones a child no longer demonstrates. They're a bit too easy. Uh, one, two, three. So I'm going to give three points for the items before the window. So previous items credited, three. So three plus two gives us a subscale score of five. Okay. Just for easy math, let's say this child happened to score fives across the board. Five, 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 five gives us a total of 20 when we add it all up. We'll write 20 in the total scale, or total score box here. And then to find our percentile rank, what we will do is use our uh, score here of the 20. We'll draw a highlighted line across and then let's just say, arbitrarily speaking, this child happens to be exactly five months of age adjusted. So then I'll highlight the line, here's the five, all the way up, and I'm going to find wherever that intersection point is. Let's say it is right on this dot here. Wow, that's super coincidental. <laughs> this dot here actually happens to be the intersection point of the 20 and the five down here. So we'll go ahead and use it. Uh, this is a tough one to see on the camera, but this corresponds to this dotted line here, and that represents the 50th percentile. So this child, based on a total score of X and their adjusted age of X, receives a, or finds themselves in the 50th percentile. But let's say it's not that simple, and this child, here's a big open space. They happen to land right in between this line here and this line here. I would just find those two lines at the bottom here, and I would say, uh, let's say it was between these two. This child is between the 25th and the 50th percentile in relationship to peers their, uh, of their corrected age. Um, so... That is about it for this assessment. One more thing that I would note, since someone will probably ask, what happens if the child scores all the way at the end? What is the motor window? Um, I see this a lot in this section here, the supine section, because there's only nine items, and I might see this one. And let's say I do see this one. That singular item happens to be our motor window, so we'll look at one point in that second column. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They'll get eight points in that first column. Let's say they don't really do this. Their, their role is a little bit different. Um, this says rolling supine to prone with rotation. Maybe they do it in a more advanced fashion. In that case, they would just get um, nine all the way across, and their motor window would be a zero, but ultimately they would receive the same score. So for that reason, 
if you do have, like we said, a child who is ambulatory and they're able to do pretty much all of these things, it's not going to capture their level of ability very well. Um, so I, I think that's really important to recognize. Uh, don't worry so much if it just happens in this supine section. It's not uncommon. <laughs> just cap out on that one really uh, soon, and that's okay. But that is the aims. If you have any other questions, please feel free to comment below. I appreciate any and all feedback. Uh, please be constructive. <laughs> um, and then in relationship to uh, liking and subscribing, that always helps too. So thanks.